This is uh, some discussion about blending the usual points approach to ranking pool players, points for finished places and tournaments, with Fargo ratings to do a better job ranking pool players. We're not doing this, we're just presenting the ideas here. Most of you know if you open the Fargo Rate app and then swipe from the left, you'll see top player lists. There'll be more of these coming soon, countries, regions, organizations, and these look an awful lot like rankings. And it's tempting to think of them that way, but they're not rankings, they're ratings. Sure, they're ranked by skill rating, and that makes it sound like a distinction without a difference. But rankings are different. These players here have only a weak requirement of being a current player. 150 games in the last two years. Basically, if they've played it all in the last couple of years, they're in. When you do rankings, you're really trying to use a series of recent competitions to engage players and promoters and fans. Promoters, for instance, will work hard to get a certain amount of added money for their event if it will give them a certain point status to contribute to the rankings. Players will work hard to attend events that have the most points up for grabs, and fans will follow the process however it's structured. Consider, though, that this is just the low-lying fruit of fan engagement. There's untapped opportunity if you can get to where fans truly believe the rankings and associate them with where people really stand in the pool world. That's not going to happen if people see a widely recognized top player not being in the top 10, or a handful of Filipino players who almost nobody in the top 20 will gamble with being ranked 40th or 50th merely because they missed a couple of events. So how do we have rankings that keep all the good things of the old approach? They're dramatic, they're fun to watch. They have the influence over the promoters. They convince the players to show up. But they're not blind to players' actual past performance that we know about. If we could have tournaments amongst the top players uh, every week or so, 30 or 40 a year, something like that, it just wouldn't matter. But that's not going to happen now or even in the future. So consider a new way to do rankings, one that blends competition, and by that I mean everything we've been doing, series of events with points assigned, and performance, and by that I mean your Fargo rating, which is a measure of how you've been doing with emphasis on more recent play. This is not unlike in other events like running, jumping, swimming, where you make it to the Olympics, for example, or get seeded not just by how you finished at a few key events, but also by your performance record. What are your uh, highest heights or fastest times, whether they've occurred at a big competition or a small one? The key is to have two kinds of points that get added together and choose them so that they're balanced. And balanced here means that neither has too big or too small an influence. For instance, you don't want somebody for whom there's ample evidence from performance that they're a top five performer falling to number 75 because they tripped over their shoelace or had a baby or got sick for a day. At the same time, you want to make sure there's room for up and comers with no significant history to essentially rise from nowhere and make a mark. Now, in pool, WPA does rankings, Eurotour does rankings, Matchroom does rankings. We're not concerned with which rankings or point structures or which tournaments right now, but we want to illustrate how this works. So let's dive into the Matchroom rankings, the way they were in March when the world shut down and they were just based upon a handful of events. The world and U.S. rankings here are based upon International Open 2019 and World Nine Ball 2019, as well as the 2020 Diamond Las Vegas event. European rankings here a little bit more developed based upon those three events, plus the King 8 event in Athens and the Stella Artois event in Belgium. For the purpose of understanding the new approach, it's easiest to start with the U.S. because there's only eight people here. So you already see a ranking here. Justin Bergman is at the top with 92 points. Jesus, who's actually a Venezuelan player, but no matter, is at the bottom with eight points. We pay attention to it. We just no longer call it the ranking. We now call it the competition ranking because it's based upon points earned in specific competitions. If we took those same eight players and ordered them instead by Fargo rating, we would get what we call performance ranking, like shown on the right here. To show you how we blend these, Let's start by looking at the competition ranking, the one on the left, as a bar chart. Note the point values themselves go from about 90 for Justin Bergman at the top uh, to about 10 for um, Jesus uh, at the bottom. 
Next, I'm going to show you a similar bar chart, but it's going to be of the performance list, so the Fargo ratings. So it's going to have Shane at the top with the longest bar. So every time we use the word performance, it means Fargo ratings. And every time we use the word competition, it means tournament points. So the performance bar chart will have Shane at the top, but instead of having Fargo ratings at the bottom, it'll have something that looks a lot like these points. So these players, once again, are ordered by Fargo rating, ordered by performance, and the number of performance points available here is roughly the same as the number of competition points available uh, in the previous slide. As the season progresses and more tournaments, and therefore more tournament points, are added to the competition component, a comparable number of points or performance points are added. Now, I haven't shown you exactly how these performance points are determined because I don't want to complicate things, but it's straightforward, there's no fuzz to it, and it's automatic. Once the tournament finishes and the tournament points are entered, this all happens in the background. So competition and performance are given equal weight, and ranking is based upon total points, competition points plus performance points. So a player that's performing about as expected We'll see competition points grow throughout the season. It'll be 50, then 100, 150, 200, and so forth. That player will probably see performance points grow at about the same rate, 50, 100, 150, 200. A player who has performed notably well compared to expectation, let's say like Justin Bergman or Chris Robinson, will see competition points outpace performance points. And a cold player will see competition points fall short of performance points. Competition points are in orange here and performance points are in blue. And you can see Justin has significant competition points, a bit a long orange bar, enough that his total points put him still above Shane Van Boning when both are considered together. And Chris Robinson has earned enough competition points that he's propelled past Billy Thorpe. Um, so that's significant. Chris Robinson is past Billy Thorpe, Justin Bergman has passed Shane Van Boning. This is enough volatility for fan engagement without offending sensibilities by having Chris Robinson go above Shane and Corey Duell, for instance. Corey Duell is an example of someone here whose blue bar and orange bar are about the same length. Uh, that means he's performing in the competitions about as expected. Okay, let's switch to European players and, and start by looking at the competition ordering. Not surprising to see Gorst and Shaw and Kachi at the top here. Might expect Joshua Filler to be up in that mix. And then we can expect to see like Alvin Ocean and Niels Fian have their high level of performance through Fargo ratings recognized a bit. So here is their competition plus performance points without changing the ordering of the listing. And you can see that Gorst and Shaw are still one and two. You can also see that Filler uh, looks like he eclipses Kachi by a little bit, but basically Filler and Kachi are roughly equal at three and four. And then Lechner, Grabe, Kazakis, Ocean, and Fian form the next clump, some relying more on uh, recent competition success and some relying more on demonstrated performance. Here is that group ordered by total points. And here is the world list ordered by competition points that are shown in blue on here, uh, but also shown on here are the performance points. So you can see that JL Chang is cl still clearly number one, e even with total points, and Gorst and Shaw are right up there uh, at the top uh, beyond that. But there's a number of players, including both Co brothers, uh, Filler, Aranis, uh, Shane Van Boning, or Colo, uh, who are right up at the top based upon earned performance points. And so if we order these players by total points, uh, it looks like this. This approach is straightforward to implement. There's an API through which current Fargo ratings can be accessed. And then given the, the whatever the current point distribution from competition points is, uh, it's straightforward to determine the performance points. So this can be a live system. There's nothing more to do. There's no more hands-on part to it beyond uh, updating the competition points that is already being done. The ranking list itself, which just shows points now, uh, 
would show competition points, performance points, and total points. Putzing with rankings and approaches to rankings is a, is a touchy issue. And this year, when there's not competitions going on, um, is as good a time as any, may probably a better time than any, uh, to, to get some ideas out there so people can absorb them and, and react to them.